Hello, hello everyone. Today I'm going to be live with Victoria from Tales of Victoria and I'm really excited to, um, to talk to her. Um, I want to know how she's done it. She grew her business very quickly and she now has very successful business making soaps and bath bombs and yeah she grew very quickly over a couple of years and um, and I want to know how she's done it and I'm sure you do too. Um, so let me see if Victoria's joined us, not yet. Um, so Victoria started about two years ago and she um, very quickly after she started she quit her job and then her partner joined in the business then she hired a few people and she moved um, from the kitchen to um, to some dedicated premises. Let me see, she's here. Dedicated premises and kept on hiring more people. And um, hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? Oh, sorry. I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Good. Good. Thank you. Thank yes. you so much for joining me today. I'm oh, really no, excited. Okay. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> Great. So I was just telling um, everyone very quickly um, a little bit about your business, yeah. very briefly, um, and about your growth and how you um, quit your job very quickly and your partner joined in and then you hired people, <laughs> moved premises. Yeah. And it seems like you managed to do that very quickly and had a, an amazing success really with um, your did. business, which... I'm sure everyone wants to know everything about it and, and how you managed to do that. Yeah. Um, so I've got quite a few questions for you and we might not have time to go through all of them. Mm -hmm. And if any of the um, people listening live have any questions, feel free to drop, drop them in the comments below and maybe maybe we'll have time for them. Yeah. Um, so do you want to tell us very briefly, um, just in, in a minute or two, what you do and about your products? Uh, so um, that everybody knows yeah, a bit more about you. Um, so we're Tales of and what we do is we make bath and home products. So it's primarily bath bombs, um, but also everything else that kind of goes with that. So the shower products um, and the home kind of freshness stuff as well. Um, and we are completely vegan, cruelty free, and we try and be as eco-friendly as possible. Um, and we're just based in the Northeast with a very small, very quiet, shy team. Um, but it, yeah, it works very well. Great. What I really want to know is about your mindset. I think when you grow so quickly, you've got to take, I mean, when you start your business, but especially when you grow quickly, you've got to take some big decisions. And I know you have, yeah. and, and those decisions are not always easy to take. And, mm -hmm. and some people might um, take too long to take those decisions sometimes and, and make that su their success um, slower. Um, so my first question around that would be um, when you started making soap, mm -hmm. did you think that there was too many people already making soaps or that did you did people tell you this that there was no money in making soaps? Did you hear that at all? Uh, not really, and to be honest, I didn't actually tell anyone I was doing it. It was all okay. <laughs> to begin with. Um, but obviously, yeah, there are people out there doing it, and I think it's the same in any any venture that you go down. There are other people doing it, but I don't see why that should stop anyone from, from doing it anyway, because who's to say you're not going to do it better? Or if there's other people out there making soap, but there's not another kind of me and my personality. Not that that's sellable, but it's it's part of the business as such um yeah but no i didn't tell anyone to be honest it was all a bit of a secret <laughs> so what stopped you from telling people um it was because i was in my old job um and my boss looking back now was a really big narcissist um mm. and the thought of telling her that i was maybe looking at an out um it just wasn't an option so okay. it was the case of um i'm gonna do it I'm going to do it really hard. I'm going to work really hard in my spare time until it gets to that point where I can be like, right, I'm off now. Yes. And so what helped you make that decision that you could quit, quit your job and, and, and work on your business full time? Um, to be honest, I think a lot of it was the fact that at that point we were in a lockdown. Um, and for me, it was really good timing for me. I know for a lot of people it was awful and it was horrible. Um, but for me, it gave me that actual distance 
from that toxic workplace and that gave yeah. me the time to put literally everything into what I was doing um and the point where I was like right okay I can quit now it was more of a financial thing um as much as I would have loved to have done it earlier it has to be a little bit like realistic really so it was at the point where I knew I could sustain a basic level of, of living really so you had been making enough money with the business for a little while to think that you could yeah live off that yeah yeah, yeah. and and then you took on a few more big decisions when your partner joined in and then you hired some people mm -hmm. how did that i mean what went through your mind when when all this happened in terms uh, of you know thinking oh that's getting too <laughs> did you think it was getting too big too quickly i'm not sure i can handle that um uh, there was at some points yeah but to be honest i can be a bit um like reckless almost i kind of come to a decision and i, I realized that it's either yes or no um and for me it was just the whole business was something that had to work yeah um, so it was just kind of a i'm just gonna go for it type thing um my mum and dad were heavily against everything <laughs> when i started telling them so the first unit they were heavily against that um and this unit they were heavily against that but it was just something that i, I just needed it and i wanted it that badly that it it just had to work or like what was the worst that would happen would be i'd be in a lot of debt and i was prepared for that outcome um so i just kind of went for it but yeah like there was no part of it where I wouldn't say it wasn't a big decision because it was like everything was a massive decision and it's yeah. obviously a huge risk for both me and Matthew to be reliant on one income because if that goes kind of down then we're, the whole thing goes down really um, yeah. but yeah it was definitely scary but I was always kind of a I'm just going to go with it I'm just going to do it and um, did you think you had a plan b no if things didn't work out <laughs> no not no I wouldn't no I don't think so looking back now no it just it just wasn't an option plan b for me was maybe um just i used to work in kfc so it probably would have been to go back to a job like that but it, it wasn't really something that ever crossed my mind it was just yeah not something you want to do now no <laughs> <laughs> and and for your partner was that was that the same for i mean he was in the same um state of mind than you just going for it and no not thinking too much of it Uh, yeah, he was actually. He's very, very like chilled out and laid back. Um, so he was just all the time just thinking, what's the worst that could happen, really? Um, so yeah, it was quite a. It was quite nice to have such a big decision and not be heavily, heavily stressful. <laughs> yeah, and you mentioned your family was against you. I guess taking more risks. Um, yeah. How did you deal with that when and you, when you've got people close to you not agreeing with you? How hard was um, it? It was hard because I, I kept on trying to tell them and show them. It was when I was moving into the first unit, which was very small, and it was because I'd I'd really outgrown the house. I had soap in every room of the house. Our bathtub was black because I was washing up all our dyes in the bath. <laughs> um, and it was the point where I was like, I, I really need to actually take this out of the house. Um, and they just wouldn't understand it at all, as parents do, and rightly fully so. They were worried about the financial risk of everything. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, they didn't see it until I actually moved into the unit and I took everything out of the house and put it in that unit. And they looked at it all and said, right, okay, I can, I can see now why you couldn't live in that house. In the house before that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. And um, so how long was it when you hired those people a few when the first person you hired mm -hmm. when how far um, how, yeah how late was it or, that would have been uh well we started in february um of 2020 um and then my mum actually she was the first person um that i employed okay. and that was in october and then matthew he didn't want to leave his job until the end of october to be he wanted to be very nice to them and make sure they were okay during the busy period and then he joined late october um and then november we took the fourth person Okay, so you had to, well, yeah. So that was very quick. And how, mm -hmm. I mean, again, was, was that maybe, maybe your mum was a li little bit easier in terms yeah. of the risk. Um, but when you hired that other, that fourth person, was that a full-time person? Yes, yeah, it was, yeah. And did you, did you have any doubt about, maybe, one, whether you were going to be able to pay that person, mm -hmm. not just for a couple of months, but, you know, long term, and two, yeah if that person was going to be the right person for you, I guess when you hire for the first time. Yeah, it is a very scary situation, especially because that unit was so small. 
we were all in really close proximity to each other so you kind of had to get along um, and me and Matthew are very shy my mum's a very quiet person um, and it takes a similar person to get along um, with yeah. that but it was someone who had watched our stories constantly um, and weirdly enough we actually had a connection through um, the woman who I used to work for um, the horrible narcissist woman she used to live next door to her so she was a victim of that woman as well which we never okay. knew until we had actually already kind of come about that she would join the team um, but it yeah it's definitely really scary because you are really bringing someone into into an area and it's it's the responsibility of being responsible for that person for me that's yes. terrifying <laughs> yeah so did you lose sleep over any of those decisions probably yeah, a good sleeper <laughs> Yeah, no, taking someone on every time we have to do it, that's that's the one that kind of hits me most. Is it? Mm. Is that the hardest decision you ever yeah. take? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're always, um, the first person we took on, we always said to her, you know, this is our, you're our first employee. I can't, I can't guarantee what it's going to be like in two months, five months, six months. Um, and she had been self-employed as well. So she always said to us that she understands that with a small business so new, no one knows how it's going to, how it's gonna go so that really helped me kind of chill out a little bit because she was yeah. okay with the unpredictability of it as well yeah she knew she knew the risks knew, as well. yeah. <laughs> yeah and I mean I guess some people like to work with um small businesses rather than you know larger corporate businesses so yeah. she took she knew where she was getting getting yeah. into <laughs> yeah thankfully yeah and um about hiring people as well how did you feel about delegating and getting other people to to do the work uh, I'm actually okay with that we have I'm not sure if it's a good way of managing people but we tend to have a very laid back process so we usually show people how to do things once and then just let them crack on and, and do it I kind of I like to think I have a lot of trust in our staff here to know what they need to do and that if they need to ask then they will ask um because I'm not overly people person, I'm not in your face. I don't want to be hovering around someone all the time. Yeah, um, yeah. So to delegate tasks, as long as everyone I know is comfortable with it, then it's it's okay. Actually, I didn't. Surprisingly, I didn't feel that need to like cling on to absolutely everything. I was quite happy to to let it go because I knew that's what needed to be done to see the business grow. Yeah, I guess it's easier for everyone that way. But yeah, <laughs> not always easy for everyone. But but <laughs> it's the yeah. best way to go with it. it is, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so I'm sure people want to know as well, what's the biggest thing, what's the thing you've done that had the biggest impact on the success of your business, do you think? Um, what I would say is because when we first started, it was literally like a month before that first lockdown, before everything changed. Um, that whole lockdown really helped because everyone was at home. They had nothing like better to do really than just scroll and have a look. Um, and at some point in June, um, I did a week on Instagram where I, I called it a week with me and it was just me in the unit on my own and I just spoke to Instagram every day. I did stories every day. I literally showed everyone every single thing that I was doing for that whole week. Um, if I had a bad day, I would tell everyone that I had a bad day. It was it was like a very personal week because everyone had seen everything. Um, and prior to that week, we were getting like 50, 60 orders. And as soon as that week had finished, we were hitting like 200, 300 orders instantly and I feel like it was just having that one dedicated week of just this is me this is what we're about this is how anxious and shy I am I'm just like everyone else <laughs> um and that just kind of kicked it off really wow so being real and, and showing your face I guess a lot of people I mean yeah. I know you say you don't like showing your face no. much, but I guess that week you did yeah I did yeah yeah because we yeah you, you don't do it much on your grid but no, no, I do sometimes on stories. Um, I've actually found it, it was easier back then when I was on my own because I can just speak and there's no one here listening, um, <laughs> which is really weird because there's lots of people here listening, like here. Yeah. Um, but since we've got bigger and had more staff, I have like retreated back from it a bit because it's scary for me to speak to my phone in front of everyone else. Um, but yeah, it was it's definitely easier back then to, to do that. Yeah, yeah. I know quite a lot of people feel very shy yeah. showing the face and talking to the camera and and yeah like you say talking to loads of people listening mm -hmm. and it can be a bit scary yeah but, but you you did it and it worked for you so that's it did. that's great yeah yeah uh, do you have people doing your social media or do you still do that yourself no we still do that ourselves. i think it's the one thing that i would always want 
to have just just for me and Matthew because that's that's how we interact with the customers that's how yeah. we put our own spin on things I would never want someone to come to me and say I was speaking to someone else and this and this I just want it to be a bit more personal it gets a bit corporate for me when I think someone else is doing yeah that, yeah media. yeah so keep it as a small business run, run yeah. by you rather than yeah. a team of people so the people yeah. you hired what what do you what do they do for you uh, so they do everything. They make the products. We just had a meeting this morning um, and we shared all our ideas. Um, they do everything, to be honest. <laughs> so you're all one big team. Yeah. Yeah, and everyone Great. does kind of different aspects of it. But yeah, everyone kind of does everything, really. Amazing. It's great. No, I think that's um, so, I mean, so, so interesting to see how you just went for it and didn't think there was any other option. I think that's mm -hmm. such a key um, take out from this, that when you think there's no plan B, you just yeah. have to go for it and, and not think too much about what could happen because, because that's, that's it. You have to, to go yeah, and do it. Have to. <laughs> yes, yes. And you mentioned very briefly in that, that you, the job you had before definitely didn't work for you. Mm -hmm. And, um, and the only the other only option you had was to for this to work. Yeah, yeah. The job that I was in before it sounded like a dream job job because I was working with dogs every day. Um, but the the business owner and I was taken straight in as a manager. I didn't have any managerial experience before that, um, and it was it was a lot of pressure. Um, and because the woman who I worked for she was very controlling, so it just kind of stripped me back completely of all my mental health. I, had to go on antidepressants for anxiety okay. um, and it, it was awful so for me it was because I had that physical distance from lockdown because we only live a street away from each other yeah. Um, yeah it really it was either then or never I would never have done it otherwise because it, I had to be so brave to like step back from it I, I wouldn't have done it if I had to be there every day mm. I think <laughs> yeah so do you feel running your business is, is a lot less stressful I mean obviously the job you had before it was <laughs> stressful for some specific reasons but yeah. do you think running your business is actually less stressful than being in the yeah. <laughs> employed work definitely, yeah yeah definitely so you're you're enjoying your running your business like on day one or even yeah. more maybe yeah i would think the only thing that gets me stressed is having obviously the other staff here because i always worry that am i annoying them am i am i a bad manager should i be doing this or that because i don't have any experience really in managing other people um for me, that's the most stressful, stressful yeah. part. Everything else I can deal with because that's my problem. Um, if the business wasn't going well and we were in debt, I can deal with that because that's my problem. Um, but having someone else's problem potentially and the responsibility of everyone else, that's the most stressful part for me. Yeah. So despite being very successful, you still have all those thoughts of, yeah. are you, am I doing it right? Yeah. Do I know what I'm doing? Always. Did I guess never stop? <laughs> no, probably not. <laughs> You just have to accept them, I guess. Yeah, you do. Yeah, every time I look at things, I'm just saying, well, that's just a learning experience. Yeah, well, yeah, no, that's fine. <laughs> amazing. Always learning. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> great. So before we finish, do you want to tell us a little bit about how people can buy from you? What's the best best place to go to look at your products and 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 buy them? Yeah, so we are primarily on Instagram, um, just as Tales of Tory Limited. But then we also have a website, which at the moment is the only way that you can purchase from us, unless you happen to see us out and about at markets. Um, but the website is talesoftoryassorbs.co.uk. Great, perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, it's been thank really, you for having me. Um, inspiring, and um, thank you. yeah, it's great to see that you've got this amazing mindset about taking decisions and going for it and not not thinking too much of others decisions yeah so well done well done to you thank you so much thank you okay and uh, wishing you all the best with uh, yeah. days of toya thank you so much thank you for inviting okay. me as well bye thank you bye. Thank, thank you everyone you. bye